after we've already added an item and a custom creative tab, we're now going to also add a block. So overall, the process of adding a block is very similar to that of adding an item. However, it is a bit more complicated, but I am sure that we'll manage. First thing we'll do is create a new package inside of our tutorial mod package, and that is going to be block. Inside of that block package, we're going to create a new Java class, and that's going to be mod blocks. Now in this class, once again, we of course need a deferred register. So public static final deferred register of type block called blocks. And we're going to say equal deferred register dot create forge registries. And this time we're going to choose blocks tutorial mod dot mod ID. Once again, making sure that when you import the block, so a block is probably going to be red for you, press alt and enter. And then very important when you choose the class you import, do not choose JDK Nashorn, choose net Minecraft block. This is one of the most common mistakes and can happen. Uh, anytime, make sure that up here you have import net Minecraft block block, not the uh, JDK Nashorn. Then you have the wrong package imported and you need to change it up here. So make sure to check that. Also, we will need a public static void register method, just the same as in the mod items. And this is going to be event bus and just the same blocks.register and then the event bus given inside of the register method. Now to make a new block, we actually need a, another helper function, or let's just say we're going to create another helper function because it makes it a little bit easier. It's going to be a private static, and now it's going to get a little bit complex, but I will go through this. So we're going to have this angular bracket here. Then we're going to make a big T, so an uppercase T extends block. Once again, the Minecraft block. Then we'll close the angular bracket, and then we're going to write registry object of type T. And this is going to be register block with the string parameter name and the supplier of type T. And this is going to be the block. There you go. Now, why do we need this? Well, we actually want to have a private method here where we both register the block and simultaneously make a new item for it. Because when you register a block, the block is registered, but there is no item associated with it. And we have to do this sort of manually. Let's first of all basically make the block. So this is registry object of type T to return. And then this is going to be blocks.register name and the block. And we're going to return this. So this is going to be return to return. So this is the value that we will return. This is the block. Right, and then we're going to create a sort of helper function to register the item as well. So this is going to be a private static. And then once again, the angular bracket T extends block called, and then void because we don't want anything in return there. Register block item in this case with a string name. And here we're going to have a registry object of type T. And this is going to be the block. And inside of it, we're actually going to call mod items dot items dot register with the name that was given as a parameter, as well as then making a new supplier here with a new block block item in this case. And then here we simply give the block there. So we're going to say block dot get and then we need some new item properties again, like we've already seen with the item. So we're just going to say item dot properties and then we simply define a group this is going to be our group mod item group that tutorial group and then the register block item is basically done we're simply going to call this right here so register block item with name and then then to return and then our helper methods are basically done so that's kind of nice and after we've done this so this is of course a little bit more complicated so firstly we of course still have a normal private static method but this might be a little bit confusing, especially if you don't have the, if you don't have at least intermediate to advanced Java knowledge. This simply says that we are going to return a registry object. So this is the normal return type in this case of a method. And in this case, what we only, what we say is that whatever this T in here is going to return, this has to extend block. That's all that we're basically saying here. And once again, the reason why we have this method is because we also want to register the block item so we don't want to call immediately when we when we'll soon create the registry object of type block. 
then we don't want to call blocks.register, but we want to call this register block method because it this already handles this as well as the creation of the block item. It's not 100% necessary that you understand everything character by character in both of these methods, just the sort of gist of it, what is happening here. So instead of calling the register method on blocks itself, like we've done with the item, where we've called items.register, we're actually doing that in a method simply because we also want to register the block item at the same time. That's sort of the gist of it. This whole expression there is really only so that we make it expandable in a lot of ways. Usually we only want to use registry object block anyway. However, this makes it a little bit more robust in the future. If any questions there remain, of course, feel free to ask and I'll be able to expand on this a little bit more if you want to sort of know how this works in more detail. The key word that you would want to use for this if you want to Google that yourself would be generics. So, so the registry object, this would be an, a generic and that would be the thing that you want to look up for Java basic. Right, and now on to making the actual block. So this is very similar to a, an item. So the item was public static final and then registry object of type item. In our case, this is going to be of type of block. And this is going to be amethyst underscore or, all written in caps, and that is equal to not blocks.register, but register block. So our method that we've made, and this is going to be amethyst or. Once again, like I've already mentioned, this name gets generated automatically here. So this sort of nameplate with, with the name of the parameter that will generate automatically. So you don't have to type that in. You only have to type in the string. So this is once again the name. And then we, of course, write require a supplier of type uh, T, in this case of type block. So we're just going to create a new block, new block. And this requires block properties in this case. So we can just say properties.create. Then we need to give it a material. This is going to be material.rock because it's an or, that, that makes sense. And then after this one, so after the rock, we can actually now define some properties. And these are, this is the list of the block properties. As you can see, a few more than we had with the item. So we actually have a few more. We only want to set a few right now. So the harvest level we want to set. The harvest level is basically zero would be wood and four would be netherite. We're just going to put it to two. So this would be iron. So you need an iron pickaxe to mine this. And then we're also going to define the harvest tool, which would be tool type dot pickaxe. Format this a little bit different so that we can all see. So we have harvest level two. So we need an iron level tool and the tool type is going to be pickaxe. And now very important so that this works, we also have to call set requires tool. That is very important. If you do not set this, then it can be actually harvested with any harvest level you want. So this is very important. And then we can also set hardness and resistance. And this simply sets like the name of the actual method, the hardness and resistance in this case. Also, don't forget to go to the tutorial mod constructor and actually add the modblocks.register method and pass it to the event bus as a parameter. Right, and now it's off to the JSON files. So firstly, we need a block stays JSON. So we're going to create a new file in here and we're going to call this the amethyst underscore or dot JSON. Once again, the name of this file must be the same as the name given here inside of our register block method. The block state JSON is actually fairly easy, at least in our case. Once again, we're going to start with the curly brackets and then we're going to have variance and then a colon curly brackets again, and inside of it, we're going to have empty quotation marks, colon, curly brackets, inside of it, a model, colon, and then here, we're once again, pointing to something. And this, in this case, we're going to be pointing to the block models in this case. So this is going to be tutorial mod, colon, block, slash, amethyst, underscore, or. This basically points to a JSON file inside of the models block folder, which we're going to create hereafter. This is a very easy block states class, basically sort of the easiest form you can have. There are, of course, more complicated things. This is something that we're going to take a look at in a later tutorial when we're actually talking about block states. Right, if we actually go down the list, then let's take a look at first the en underscore us json. And this is actually a very easy add as well. So this is going to be block dot tutorial mod dot amethyst underscore or and this is amethyst amethyst or that's as easy as this the block models json is not that difficult as well so this is going to be amethyst underscore or dot json once again do not forget the json here and we're going to start once again with the curly brackets and then we're going to have parent 
colon block slash cube underscore all, a comma, then we're gonna have textures, curly bracket, then we're gonna have, the last one is all, colon, and then once again, tutorial mod, colon block slash amethyst underscore or. Once again, all assets as well as all of the files are linked in the description below. So if you don't want to type all of this out, you can of course also copy it over from there. A quick explanation. This simply means that we have a cube. So this is of course a block is a cube. And we simply set all the sides to the same texture. In this case, to the amethyst or texture that should be inside of our textures block folder. So this once again refers to that. But before we can add that texture, we actually have to add an item model as well because otherwise the amethyst ore inside of our inventory is not going to look like it looks in the world. So we're going to create a new file there as well. And that this is, surprise, surprise, also called amethyst underscore ore dot JSON. And this once again has the curly brackets, but this in this case is very easy. So this is going, simply going to be parent colon tutorial mod colon block slash amethyst amethyst underscore ore. And that's it. So this simply refers back to the amethyst or JSON inside of the models block folder right here so that the block inside of the inventory is basically the same as it looks inside of the world. Right, and last but not least, we can add the texture here as well. So let's just add it here as well. And once again, of course, the texture is available for download for you as well. Now this should be everything that we need to do in order to add a block. So let's see if it worked. All right, we find ourselves in the game right now. So let's actually see if it worked going to our creative tab here and there it is the amethyst ore so first of all if we hold it in the inventory it works so if i throw some down on the ground it displays properly and if i place it in the world it also works now we can also check whether or not the it actually works with the pickaxe right i've given myself a few pickaxes and it should not work with the stone pickaxe so as you can see it, first of all it takes very long to break and it doesn't work with the iron pickaxe, it works. With the diamond pickaxe, it works as well. Now, as you can see, nothing has dropped because we have actually not added a loot table for it, which we're going to make after this. Right, last but not least, let us add the loot table for our amethyst ore. So down in our data folder in the loot tables blocks folder that we've hopefully already created, we're going to create a new file once more. And this is going to be the amethyst underscore ore.json. And the loot table is a bit more complex and you can actually do a lot of things with the loot tables. I will link down in the description a very good wiki page where you can basically see everything for the entirety of the loot tables there. And it is explained in far more detail than we're going to cover right now. So we first need to define a type. This is going to be Minecraft colon block. This is, should, of course, make sense because we're right now basically making a loot table for a block. And then we define something that is called pools. And we then need these. And then we need these brackets instead of curly brackets. Inside of it, we need curly brackets again. And then have roles. This basically defines how often this is rolled. And then one, and then some entries. So this is basically what is being rolled. Uh, this is once again the bracket here. And then one, one set of curly brackets type. So this is what we're going to return, basically an item. So we want an item to drop. And then the name of the item is going to be tutorial mod colon amethyst. So we don't want the order drop, but rather the actual amethyst. If you want the order drop, you can also put in underscore or here. So that works whatever you actually want to. And once again, this file is, of course, available for download as well. And let's actually check if it worked. All right, we find ourselves back in the world and let's see if I actually take the amethyst ore and mine it with my diamond pickaxe. It is going to drop an amethyst, as you can see. So the same should happen with the iron pickaxe. And it does. And now with the stone pickaxe, it should not work. So we're going to sit here for a little while and actually as like the speed is already an indication that it won't work. And as you can see, it did not drop anything because we have the the block properties that we have set, it was that the it was that the stone pickaxe was not able to actually mine it because we set it to harvest level two. So we actually require a an iron pickaxe or to actually mine the amethyst ore. Right, and that was already it for this tutorial right here. How to add a block. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If any questions remain or you run into any errors, of course, always feel free to drop me a comment down below. Otherwise, if you liked it, I would really appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos down the line. 
And that would be it for this video. I will see you next time. So yeah.